doing? I'm fine. How are you? Great. Nice to meet you on this platform. Yeah, same here. Same here. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, Sorry, Mr. I'm, Rabi, getting, how are you doing? I'm just getting my camera to perfect. All right. Hello, Charu, ma'am. How are you? Hello. Hello, Charu. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we, we still have two minutes to go, uh, but I think as we're here, we can, uh, uh, you know, go on with the session. Yeah. yeah. So, so which one of us would you want to speak first? So, yeah. so, so I'll just uh, introduce both of you. So good evening, everyone out there and hope everybody is enjoying their Sunday. The topic of today's session is a new era citizen social responsibility. And for this session, we have two speakers on board who will be speaking for 11 minutes each. And let me give a quick introduction of both of them. So our first speaker is Mr. Ramit Singh Chimney, who is a co-founder of Eight Goals One Foundation, which is also known as Eight One. Ramit continues to implement and advise interventions in the development sector, where he co-founded Eight Goals One Foundation. Eight One promotes eight identified goals of well-being, gender equality, peace, environment, hygiene, nutrition, education, and employment. Our second speaker is Dr. Charulata Singh, who is a professor and dean of Vivekananda School of Journalism and Mass Communication. She was about, awarded copyright for the concept individual social responsibility by Government of India in 2017, and also for coining the word digitracy by Government of India in 2018. So our First part of the session, we will start with our first speaker, who is Mr. Ramit Singh Chimney. Please welcome Mr. Ramit Singh Chimney. And uh, Mr. Ramit, now over to you. Thank you so much, Sarita. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. And it's, it's great to be here with, with Charu Ma'am, um, who I'm very eager to hear after I'm done. Um, so hello, everyone, to everyone who's listening into this session. It's wonderful to be back again at the WEF. This is my third time on this platform, and I'm happy to note that in spite of COVID and the consequent digitization of this event, the excitement and positive energy around here is exactly the same. And I've, I've been looking at uh, all the videos from yesterday as well, and it's fantastic how, how lively this entire platform is. My talk today is on social responsibility, or more accurately, citizen social responsibility. Contrary to instructions that I've received, I'm going to take this opportunity to present a critique of the manner in which concepts of social responsibility have been blurred over the years. And how, in my humble yet opinionated view, the need that exists is to go much further than even just citizens and work towards inculcating social responsibility in each and every human being. Therefore, embarking upon a mission for humanity just like we at the Eight Goals One Foundation have done, right? And I will not uh, infringe upon the copyright that Ms. Uh, Charu Ma'am has on individual social responsibility, but that's really what the point here is, right? My biggest grouse against the use of the word citizen is that it's a political construct with no other material purpose than to serve the governments of our world and provide them with the validity which they thereafter use to not only make far-reaching decisions that impact all of us, but also our planet as a whole. If you take that away from the understanding of a citizen, it becomes very, very clear that all other rules and regulations that are otherwise linked to being a citizen can very well be made applicable on residents as well. Unfortunately, and since we are at the Women Economic Forum, women were perhaps the very first superset of human beings that experienced a similar ploy to create differentiation and discrimination through a socially and politically motivated construct. This construct is also what I believe very personally to be at the genus of all discriminatory practices across the world. The construct I'm talking about is of course gender, and the consequent gender roles that have been passed on ever since men and women began their journey on earth. Now, before I get sidetracked and start talking about the problems I have with the way that society has used gender to discriminate between human beings, let's get back to the problems that the concept of CSR brings forth. Irrespective of whether the moniker is being made applicable to corporates, as was done traditionally, or citizens, as it seems to be being done now. 
winning the responsibility towards society to large corporates is in my opinion as antithetical as voluntarily giving a criminal a get out of jail free card before they're convicted for every one company that truly cares for society and undertakes csr from the goodness of their hearts there are the other 99 that actively use it to hide the wrongs that they have done change per public perception about themselves use it as a means for further furthering marketing of their products and services and more frequently as i as i as i know very personally to circle money back to themselves just like the term citizens the terms corporations emanated from politics in so far as those in power sought to ring fence the activities done by them in the course of business from themselves giving a non living entity an independent juristic identity has ensured that business owners no longer need to worry about humanity and can therefore sleep peacefully knowing that the, their actions are not by them but this dehumanized version of themselves that has been recognized by politicians as a separate entity through the laws that they've enacted at the core of this issue is the fact that all corporations are driven by commerce then it that in itself is not a bad thing but if you move forward commerce is driven by consumer behavior and consequently the key objective of any corporation is to manipulate consumer behavior towards increased and repeated consumption of course the companies spin it in a completely different way um to make it appear as if this is not so more often than not csr is one of those ways with which they spin it dow chemicals the ones who caused the bhopal gas tragedy union carbide to which some of my mother's closest friends lost their near and dear ones and many continue to suffer till date dow chemicals on the other hand is part of a 30 billion dollar empire and in spite of many more transgressions around the world its shareholders directors and employees all continue to make tremendous profits and revenues from these disasters British Petroleum was responsible for an oil spill whereby over 200 million gallons of crude oil was pumped into the Gulf of Mexico for 87 days. British Petroleum is a 60 billion dollar company. This wasn't the first time they were responsible for an oil spill either. Every time they paid their way through legally through and turned public perception through their CSR. Purdue Pharma was responsible for misrepresenting OxyContin an opioid which is a class of drugs to whom I have lost my friends. it has contributed to a third and a half of all drug related deaths globally cocaine you talk about everything oxycontin has contributed to a third and a half of all drug related deaths in the world yet purdue pharma that one company and many others as well is a 3 billion dollar company while purdue was charged for their misrepresentation right and while that was happening in court they continued to book more than 1 billion dollars in annual sales for the drug in that year the point is that humans make citizens and citizens make corporations what all of these examples show us is the fact that pinning responsibility only on a juristic identity leads to actively dehumanizing social and societal responsibilities which is why it is important to strip away these identities that differentiate and let humans help other humans therefore to broaden the parameters of this talk beyond just corporates and citizens i would like to introduce the concept of human social responsibility just like charu ma'am has individual social responsibility and i believe we speak of the same thing for it is only the humanity in us that has the capability to work without the end goal of profits contribute without mandates and not capitalize at the expense of other humans Did you know and a few more examples since I do have a bit of time did you know that mental disorders don't require treatment via medication in all cases in fact according to many many academic studies that have been buried under seas of other medical studies consumptions of micronutrients are at least equally if not more effective in dealing with the symptoms related to med- mental diseases like ADHD and post traumatic stress disorder etc however you don't very often see advertisements or prescriptions of micronutrients being handed out to individuals with mental disorders did you know that menstrual blood is nutritious enough to serve as an organic fertilizer for plants it's the it's the most nutritious blood that either a man or a woman ever has in their body with the presence of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium menstrual blood can provide nutrition to plants which equals the nutrition provided by organic fertilizers however i personally never heard an advertisement marketing menstrual cups even right let alone anything else 
for where would corporates be if they did not provide short term solutions that set up long term problems which in turn find their solution in consumer based products corporates are and always will be driven by commerce and consumer behavior this is set off a race of benefiting of humans whereby the winners inevitably that entity which has mastered that art of manipulating customers or more accurately human behavior in an attempt to balance this uh, corporate social responsibility is is now a legally binding mandate based on certain financial parameters in india the corporates need to meet a requisite benchmark and are required to set aside 2% of their earnings and contribute it towards the betterment of society this contribution to society has never been silent especially when the opportunity to benefit of marketing these contributions can potentially turn into profits the unending cycle that is then perpetuated is one that begins with generating profits at the expense of humanity devoting a minute percentage of those profits towards the betterment of humanity which in turn is utilized to generate more profits by appealing to humanity legally created ent- identities require legally binding mandates to ensure a contribution of this 2% appealing to the humanity of humans on the other hand requires only an appeal which can lead to an untapped amount of social responsibility which need not be forced or limited now admittedly while the shift to citizen social responsibility is a shift that is centered around human beings at the end of the day right it is still not one that puts humanity at the fore- forefront right and that's where my problem is consider those individuals who live in countries they are not citizens of do they not have a responsibility towards society irrespective of their citizenship should they not constantly strive to be responsible humans that aim to contribute to society consider those individuals who have been displaced and stripped of their citizenship due to the forces beyond themselves should they not belong and contribute to a society which constantly strives for betterment and the in- upliftment of each other citizenship like corporations restricts us it binds us to geographical boundaries it actively prevents us from working towards betterment when we can where we can however we can i can tell that i'm running out of time now so i will no, leave you no you can continue that's fine we still have some more time left so that's fine uh, so broadly I, at the end i really just what i want to say um, right and i'm i'm happy to take questions at the end of this if we still have more time is that for us to do better and this is really the my message right we just, we don't just need to change the angle from which we approach social responsibility we need to change our entire perspective so let's look beyond classifications corporation citizens beyond mandates beyond boundaries and embrace that one trait that is common that makes us who we are across the world let's live as humans let's undertake social responsibility and with humanity at the forefront it's only then and i told you in the beginning i have nothing against corporations right i have nothing against governments but it's only then that these corporations and governments citizens can achieve during the day and still sleep peacefully during the nights that's as of right now that's all i have to say thank you so much thank you so much ramit it it is really really not only very informative but i must say that very emotive speech and uh, i completely agree on the thought that you know like humans be citizen and uh, humanity should be the uh, idea and ideology so now over to uh, charu uh, dr charu uh, so yeah you can please start your your speech uh, yeah uh, thank you and uh, uh, first of all i would like to uh, you know thank dr harbin arora and the organizers of this digital event and summit uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak on this topic uh it is really an honor for me to be part of this august uh, gathering and express my views on the topic now when we talk about uh, citizen social responsibility i uh, 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 quite a lot agree with ramit you know when he is talking about citizen social responsibility somehow we uh, when we say citizen social responsibility we are uh, binding it you know within the nation or within the constitutional framework so uh, you know i will uh, probably uh, descri- like to describe social responsibility in a more academic uh, way being an academician i will like to take all aspects of uh, 
you know, uh, social responsibility. And that is where my concept of individual social responsibility rather than, uh, you know, citizen social responsibility. So uh, when we uh, talk about the citizen social responsibility, what we mean actually is that, uh, you know, everyone, each one uh, need to uh, work in the interest of the society and the interest of the environment. Uh, so that means that it is the ethical obligation on the part of the individual to voluntarily contribute to the knowledge and resources to the widest spectrum of the people in the society. So when I'm talking uh, of uh, 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 social responsibility, I will take three aspects. One is political, second is social, and third is individual. You know, when we talk about the political aspect of uh, uh, social responsibility, uh, we talk about uh, democratic constitutions. We, we also align with uh, other democratic values and uh, uh, across uh, the countries. So probably there we figure out the concept of global citizenship. You know, when we talk about global citizenship, again, we are going beyond the boundaries of the constitution and we are uh, probably aligning ourselves with the, with the democratic values. And there we, uh, you know, talk about the global citizenship, globals, various issues uh, which we come across. So in that concept, uh, you know, I talk about, again, three things. One is awareness, second is action, and third is the decision. You know, when I talk about awareness, I'm talking only about the political aspect. So when we talk about awareness, are we aware about, uh, uh, about our, uh, you know, policies, our laws, are we even aware about the various provisions of the constitution? You know, whatever is done, whether it is according to constitution or not, where, where uh, you know, uh, uh, what laws we have, what rights we have, what duties we need to perform as uh, uh, citizens. So do we really, are we really aware? So that is one thing. Second is uh, actions. If we are aware of all these things, what are our actions? Do we, uh, you know, rise against injustice? Do we rise against discri uh, discrimination? Or for that matter, if something is good done uh, as per the constitution, do we uh, really appreciate that? Or we take people along uh, uh, in that, uh, 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 you know, thought processes. So um, uh, finding out what is right and wrong. And then the third is the decision whether our decisions are well informed, whether we take well uh, uh, informed decisions in the good of all, you know, for example, uh, 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 simplest of the example is the right to vote, right? We have awareness about the right to vote. Everybody knows, yes, we need to, this is our right and we need, as citizen, we need to cast our vote. Uh, then second comes the action, you know, um, uh, if we, this is our right, uh, do we really go and vote? Uh, uh, do we cast uh, exercise that right in the right spirit? Then third is the the decision. You know, when are we are casting that vote, uh, do we really know what we are doing? Our decision is correct. Who is the candidate? Which is the political party? What they have done? What is their past? What is their contribution, etc. You know, so are we taking that informed decision? or not being socially responsible as a citizen, right? So these are some of the political aspects. Now we, I come to the social aspect of it. So when I talk about the social aspect, you know, uh, in social aspect, there is lot which can be done. You're, you know, uh, uh, as a society uh, or in the social uh, arena, there are, uh, uh, we can contribute uh, as per our expertise, if we have certain expertise, we have certain skills, we can empower others and, you know, uh, uh, do the capacity building. Uh, secondly, uh, we can, if we have knowledge, we can share our knowledge, our know-how uh, know -how of our knowledge, and then, uh, you know, empower others in the, uh, in the society. Uh, if we have the strength uh, or physical strength or wealth, again, we can, you know, uplift the uh, certain sections of the society by different kinds of contributions or whatever. Now, in this social areas or social sector, when we talk about there are, uh, the government is doing a lot, 
there are there are ngos who are contributing there are corporates where ramit is talking about the corporate social responsibility so they 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 uh, 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 you know they are legally binding now as he said 2% to give to the so give back to the society so uh, people are doing communities are doing so there there are a lot of things which we can do Um, um as part of our uh, social responsibility and uh, of course uh, uh, this social responsibility is uh, i would rather say if it is binding on the corporates it should be binding on each and every citizen uh, you know uh, uh, going further on that uh, aspect if i say you know but then uh, as uh, it is it should not uh, even the small businesses i would say if they are not cooperate even if it is uh, if we take in that context uh, even if there are a lot of in digital uh, era there are a lot of individual businesses which are coming up and which are probably uh, less than 5 500 uh, crores of uh, profits so do they not have the responsibility towards the society yes they they can do a lot towards uh, you know whatever they are doing and uh, uh, so all these aspects at the social level are there then third i would talk about the individual social responsibility now uh, individually you know even if we are part of uh, an ngo even if we are part of a corporate even if we are part of uh, say even uh, the government or uh, any uh, organization or an institution we can contribute a lot at individual level as well right so uh, 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 when i talk about individual level means that we can contribute wherever we are you know uh, we don't have to go far we we can contribute uh, wherever we are suppose we, i am at a workplace you know at my workplace do do I, i am i working with honesty am i working with integrity do i have empathy you know uh, uh, do i consider uh, uh, various aspects of it you know so at workplace also for example uh, whatever you are doing you know uh, for example uh, if i am an academician i am uh, i am dean for journalism and mass communication in vivekananda institute of professional studies so there are lot of students what as my responsibility i uh, of course we need to go through the syllabus and uh, we have to complete the syllabus and all that but i tell my students Uh, you know you have to get aligned with any one of the ngos and do work for the society you know that uh, uh, so uh, they they are working with uh, you know various extension uh, uh, works uh, uh, they have various uh, awareness campaign campaigns running along with uh, whatever they are studying etc so uh, uh, we have legal aid cells etc so you you know you need to encourage the students uh, uh, to uh, you know work beyond whatever your limits are so these are the voluntary contributions and that is what is the social responsibility you know so each one whatever profession whatever work you are doing you can contribute a lot to uh, uh, wherever you are for example this is a workplace i talk about suppose you are in a garden or a, a sorry park or you are working on a road so uh, if you are in a park if you see uh, an injured bird or an injured animal what do you do you know what where is your social responsibility to that if you are walking on a road you see the have you ever picked up a wrapper and thrown it uh, thrown uh, it in the dustbin we talk about uh, swachh bharat and everything but how each of the individual whether we are doing enough are we doing uh, you know these are the smallest of the things at the community level suppose uh, uh, there uh, everybody uh, is cooking and everybody has left over food do we have the food bank where you know we collect all the food and give to the neighborhood uh, uh, areas where we can uh, contribute so there is uh, there is no limit to uh, whatever uh, you know we can do we need only the uh, you know uh, emotional intelligence and social awareness through which we can contribute and i uh, uh, you know strongly believe in the indian culture and indian values so if we talk about the uh, the contribution to the society you know in indian culture and values we have already been told uh, you know we are uh, right from the beginning told to give back to the society to give uh, uh, you know never we have been told to take right or extract 
so uh, uh, you know uh, so these values you know uh, when we talk about uh, uh, sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve bhavantu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kaschit dukh bhag bhavet that means all may be happy may all be happy may all be healthy may all have prosperity and may none suffer so uh, you know we uh, uh, we need to uh, for me uh, actually you know uh, we talk about dharma dharma is nothing but duty duty is uh, uh, duty is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, done through various kinds of actions and uh, 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 these actions uh, have an impact you know they have an impact on society or environment wherever we are even for that matter the uh, if somebody says that i'm not harming the environment i'm not harming the society why do i need to give back to the society you know even being an individual that is my personal belief that even by you know taking a breathing or taking a breath we are uh, uh, giving a, a you know foul air into this environment for our food simplest of the food or for our living we are extracting resources from this mother nature mother earth so in that way each and every individual uh, needs to give back to the society who whatsoever little they can do or more they can do according to their capabilities and according to their uh, capacities as i said whether it is expertise in skills knowledge uh, wealth or whatsoever right so um we need to give back uh, as much as uh, uh, we can and it is the responsibility social responsibility it is an individual social responsibility and this is my uh, uh, the uh, the the premise of my concept that as an individual we because whatever we take back if each and every individual understands that he should uh, or he needs to do a little extra to voluntarily and very well said uh, dr sharu i must say so you know. to okay and probably you know and uh, another aspect is that we need to highlight these uh, you know small stories of contributions which may further entangle with each other and ultimately uh, we rise uh, uh, as a, a transformed society because that is what is the ultimate uh, objective of each of uh, an act as a social oh. responsibility nice thank you so much for sharing such lovely thoughts and i really like the idea that you know these smaller steps are 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 the stepping stones for the bigger ones so on this note um, thank you once again to both of you and i would also like to uh, announce the award on behalf of wef so to mr ramit um, wef would like to award you as the iconic leader creating a better world for all Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so okay. much. And uh, to Dr. Charu, um, we, we are ha happy to confer the award as iconic woman creating a better world for all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, if we have time, I I will just uh, 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 recite my uh, because I sometimes I write also, so I can. Recite. Yeah, sure. Maybe we can just uh, give another thirty seconds or forty-five seconds. Okay. So up. this is uh, to you all and to uh, Dr. Harbin Arora. She is uh, doing a wonderful job, I think, by recognizing these small efforts which we all of us are doing in their in our smallest of the areas. so i think recognition is very uh, uh, important uh, it encourages us to do more so what i uh, have written is uh, it's in hindi aao chale ek karwa banaye aao chale ek karwa banaye chale jahan wahan ek naya jahan banaye chalo duniya ko apna banaye aao chale ek karwa banaye hauslon ko hum jagaye हाथ बढ़ाए नजरें उठाए सब में समाए औरों का हाथ थामे और अपना थमाए औरों का हाथ थामे और अपना थमाए बढ़े जहां हम सबको बढ़ाए आओ चले एक कारवा बनाए आओ चले एक कारवा बनाए वेरी नाइस इट वॉज अमेजिंग 
All right. So on this note, thank you so much, both of you. And um, thank you once again for your uh, great work and uh, joining WEF uh, as speakers. Thank you. So, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to be thank here. You. Yeah, same here. Really enjoyed. Thank you, Ramit. Thank you.